There we go. Actually, wow, yeah, that looks like it came out pretty well. Hey everybody, so it is cold and rainy outside, so I am going to be doing something a little bit different today that I've been wanting to show you all for for actually quite some time now, but yeah, it's awesome, it's super fun, and it's something you can do in the comfort of your own kitchen, and that is making bismuth crystals. So bismuth is some very cool stuff because it is what is called paramagnetic, which means it is more magnetic on the outermost points here's some that failed on the outermost points of the crystal so they'll form what's called a hopper crystal which is you know a crystal with those perfect steps because as it cools the metal is more attracted to the outer edges so you get these just crazy stepped structures that just look awesome but the cool thing about bismuth is it has an extremely low melting point as far as metals are concerned, especially a heavy metal, which is what bismuth is, and it melts at 540 degrees, which is just insane. <laughs> so to start off, you're obviously going to need some bismuth. I would highly recommend Bolton Metals. They have a very good price on bismuth, and I mean, they sell up to like pallets like you can literally buy a ton of business from them and I'm not I mean literally a ton of business from them it's just madness but anyway you're gonna need pretty much a minimum of 10 to 15 pounds to get a good yield when you order it it'll come in a brick this is just shaped to the bottom of my my pot right here but it may look like not that much but this is actually probably about 20 pounds it is extremely heavy stuff and it's very brittle, so it's super easy to just break up and toss on in there. Next two things you're gonna need are obviously a pot that you're willing to sacrifice <laughs> or go out and get one specifically for this to melt it in, and then another pot to pour in, you know, what, what you don't use. And then tongs, I use two just because it makes things easier for me. Again, go cheap because they're gonna get destroyed. <laughs> and something to stir everything with. Again, I just used the screwdriver because it was cheap and I don't care if it gets destroyed. Again, you can do this on the stove top. I just use my hot plate because it's convection and I have more control over specific temperatures and whatnot, so. I'm gonna plug this in. Managed to outsmart the plug. And I'm gonna go up to 450, because that is the melting point. So we're just gonna let that heat up, and yeah, go from there. Alrighty, it is good and melted. So you'll see that there is a bit of a skim on the surface, and that is called slag. What am I doing? I should be wearing gloves. One second. <laughs> That's better. Got my welding gloves. All right, so once we move all of that pile of slag over, you'll see more is gonna start forming. That's fine. That's not the, from the, the initial melting, we'll move all of the impure slag, impurities to the surface. Yep, and that we can remove it easily just by pulling it out but then after that the slag is actually it's not slag it's just you know solidifying over the surface so it's it's not a problem so now that we have hit this point we are going to turn our heat down to 400 and that is very important because we don't want the heat to go away entirely we just don't want it to be melted anymore so the slower that you cool the metal, the bigger your crystals are gonna be. So we want that really slow cooling. And now we're just gonna keep periodically raking the surface. 
and that is going to keep things from hugging onto the walls of the pod. Okay, that's what we want to see. So you see how these little cubes are starting to form? Those are actually the crystals that are, are in the making, and that's another reason why we want to continuously clear off our walls. Because those will keep floating right there. Let me scoop all these out. All right, now this is where the other pot comes in. Slide this over so you can actually see. Sometimes you can get some awesome crystals forming on the inside as well, so we're gonna dump this out. Another thing that bismuth is awesome for is actually learning how to do uh, metal casting because you don't need a foundry to to melt it down and yeah so it's actually a great thing to learn how to get started with metal casting because once you do find yourself with a foundry you'll actually know how to go about making casts so first things first you need to make some wax mold or you know casts and these will get put into plaster but you do that by making molds out of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm out of focus. There we go. Molds out of um, silicone. And I would show you how I make these, but I'm unfortunately out of silicone right now, so I cannot do that, but yeah. All right, so we'll let that cool off and yeah, I'll show you what to do next. All right, it has hardened up, so let, let's get it out of here. All right, I didn't quite like the way that one came out. I lost some of the spikes. It's supposed to look like, oh, where is one? Here's one. It's supposed to look like this. And the spikes kind of went away. So we're gonna use this one, which is just perfect. We're gonna take a small container and fill it about Eh, up to like here with plaster of Paris. Alrighty, so I'm gonna start adding water. I do it slowly rather than all at once. Oh, I didn't grab enough. I always forget how much it goes away when you add the water. <laughs> oh yeah, I definitely didn't have enough. Well, I'll have to go get some more. Alrighty, that's better. So we've got it mixed up, so we're gonna just submerge this guy in there. Alrighty, so it's cured. I made that funnel a little bit bigger. So it is ready to melt, melt out the wax. Uh, I don't have an oven here, so I can't do it the proper way. I'll be using a torch, which is very slow and time consuming and inefficient and definitely not the right way to do it. But if you are doing this at your home, just pop this in the oven. It will melt out all the wax if you hold it. If you set it down upside down with a like a bowl or something underneath it, it'll catch all the wax and simultaneously kind of cook the the plaster, which will make it even harder, which is ideal. So I'm gonna start getting this ready and yeah. And there you go. Now we have a complete perfect hollow inside of here that is the exact same shape as the shell. So this is ready to go, so let's go get another batch ready. Alrighty, so we're gonna get this mold ready, pour it out, and then we'll just reheat it up and do a batch of crystals. So to keep things from getting out of hand, <laughs> it's a good idea to heat your mold up because any temperature shock will freak the metal out.
Alrighty, well, that is cooled down enough to handle, so let's see what we got. Honestly, very curious to see how that came out, what with the, the bubbling, that's usually not the best sign. Fortunately, these molds are one-time use, so whenever you want to do another cast, you're going to have to make another one. Oh, it looks like it came out alright, at the bottom anyway. <laughs> let's find out. Eventually. Don't want to bend the cast, so I'm doing it fairly gently. There we go. Actually, wow, yeah, that looks like it came out pretty well. Here, you know what? Let me just get this out, and then I'll show you. <laughs> well, I'd say it came out pretty well, actually. Really matched the shape of that shell really well. That is just some really cool stuff. <laughs> the way it was bubbling, I was not sure how it was going to come out, but I think it actually came out very well. So at this point, uh, this would be the time when you start sanding and polishing to pretty it up and get rid of all those little imperfections, or just leave it as it is, honestly. It actually looks really good, but I actually do have a foundry where I smelt metal. Specifically, I do a lot of aluminum casting, so this is probably going to just get melted back down because it's kind of a waste of bismuth, especially when I can just make another one out of aluminum. See, for example, this is a, a small horse conch. Actually, it's a striped fox shell that I cast a while back. Still cleaning it up, but got to cut this bottom off, but yeah. Here's the crystals from batch two and three. I think they actually look really good, so here, I'll get some close-ups for you. Well, I think that is going to do it for this one. Uh, one thing to keep in mind with bismuth is you can make crystals pretty much as big as you have room for. <laughs> so with the amount that I had, this is about max. You don't get a whole lot bigger than that. But the deeper the, the amount of bismuth, the more space that the, the crystals have to grow. So if you have a lot of bismuth, you can make crystals substantially larger than these. But yeah, they're a lot of fun to play around with and you get some really, really cool stuff. And the best part about them is if you don't like what you came out with, you just toss them back in and melt them down, start try again. And again, I will be probably melting this one down because I have aluminum that I can cast with. But if you're looking to get into metal casting and want a really easy way to start getting the hang of what you're supposed to do, Bismuth is a great metal for that. But yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this one. Uh, definitely feel free to subscribe if you feel that I earned it. I'm doing a whole bunch of this kind of stuff on the channel as well as rock hunting and carving. So if you're into that kind of stuff, there's a whole lot more to be found. Uh, go ahead and like if you actually liked it. <laughs> That's kind of an important part. Also, again, I say this in every video, but definitely don't hesitate to leave me a comment. I love having conversations with you all. But yeah, I, ha I will have another one coming out very, very soon. I genuinely hope you all enjoyed, and yeah, stay safe and have a good one.